All right, so this is a sideline shoulder external rotation. You've probably seen this in a lot of uh, videos, um, but we're going to pay, pay very close attention to the details. So one of the mistakes that I see somebody make all the time is to let this shoulder really shrug up towards their ear and this shoulder to be pushed down towards their waist. So as you can see, my shoulders are not stacked on top of one another, and as a result, my shoulder is depressing more towards my hip. And so when I perform this external rotation, because my shoulder is depressed, I'm gonna be using a lot more of my lat. My lat is a shoulder internal rotator. It is not supposed to externally rotate the shoulder. It depresses the shoulder and it can create some irritation in the shoulder. So biggest thing that you wanna do is make sure that you set up with your shoulders stacked on one another and then use this other hand as just kind of like a, a little bit of a pillow rest for you too if you don't have something to rest your head on. Um, ideally you have something to rest your head on that just makes it a little bit easier that way your head isn't cranked all over the place but I realize depending on where you're doing this uh, you might not have the most perfect setup available to you. So um, using your hand to help support you and then rotating up and down like this as the shoulders stay stacked on top of one another. Now the other thing you need is we need to make sure we got something lightly resting on our elbow to just keep a little bit of space. Uh, research is showing that you get a lot more activation of the infraspinatus there versus cranking down. Also the more you crank down with your elbow into your side, again the more latch you're probably cranking, uh, more lat tension you're probably creating and again that is not helping this exercise and it could actually cause uh, pain in the front of your shoulder um, in some circumstances. So we're not pushing down, we're just lightly resting um, our arm on a little bit of a rolled up towel or something just to space the elbow out a little bit as opposed to actively kind of holding it here. Um, again, actively holding it here just isn't going to use the musculature that we're trying to create. If you hold it here, you're just going to kick on a lot more delt than what is necessary with this exercise. So again, keep the arm rested on something lightly because we're going after the infraspinatus, which is a rotator cuff muscle. Now lastly, what you'll see when somebody starts rotating is they'll lead with, the, they'll think about lifting from the wrist. So they'll extend their wrist as they come up as opposed to thinking about rotating from the shoulder. So the shoulder should initiate that movement because um, that's where we're trying to generate the movement from. So think about the shoulder initiates the movement and the forearm follows and the wrist follows. It's not the wrist leading the movement and the shoulder finishing the movement. The shoulder starts and creates the movement the entire way and the wrist just follows. So seems like a small difference but it creates uh, a significant change in the sensation of what muscles you feel working with the exercise.